Greetings, everyone. In this video, I will be reviewing iDrive, a cloud storage and backup service. It's nice to be back online again. During my recent move, I chose to add online storage as part of my backup plan. iDrive is the provider I selected for the initial trial. In this video, I will be discussing my experiences using iDrive. I do have some previous experience, though somewhat unwilling, with cloud storage. Google Cloud and Microsoft OneDrive jumped to mind right away, even though that's probably something different or a little different than what I'm doing now. But question, has anyone besides me had an issue trying to shut these services off and keep them turned off? Every time I get an update, they seem to turn back on for some reason. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. I have also run my own uh, Nextcloud server instance back in the day when I was not stuck behind a CG NAT. Well, CG NAT. Carrier grade network address translation, sort of like what your uh, router does, only for your uh, ISP. And it's something that if you're running a local server, you can't access from the internet unless you're using something like Tailscale or Cloudflare tunnels, for instance. I'm approaching this video as a user of iDrive services. This video is not sponsored by, nor am I endorsing iDrive, nor am I receiving any sort of remuneration or compensation. This is strictly my independent review as a new user for a couple of months of their service. So first, I'm no longer in the Philippines, but rather in the uh, great state of Virginia in the good old US of A. My current best guess is that I will be here for hmm, between uh, three to six months. There's a few factors involved here, but anyway, before heading back to the Philippines, now back to the video subject at hand. I wanna start with the 3-2-1 uh, backup rule or 321 backup rule. Maybe suggestion would be a better this is not actually a rule of any sort. It's a suggestion for how to handle your backups. Paraphrasing uh, the suggestion a bit, at least three copies of your data in at least two different media formats with at least one being stored offsite. So I think that's basically it. In a nutshell, what I have at the moment is one copy stored on several mechanical hard drives in the Philippines, which is quickly becoming outdated, but it's there. Another two copies are stored on external solid state drives, which I brought with me, just in case I run into laptop problems. Yeah, not gonna happen, but just in case. One is in the house and the other is in the car, so they're separate. I swap them around every week so that their backup's no, lo no more than a week old. And one copy is now stored on a remote server via iDrive, the subject of this video. Now that that's covered, let's talk a little bit about cloud storage. I really hate that term, cloud storage. Your data is stored on a remote server someplace. It's not floating around in an internet cloud. I still run into people who seem to believe that is the case. Eh, what can you do? Next, there are basically two types of cloud storage we're gonna be talking about here, and you're likely to run, in, run across. To avoid confusion in this video, I will be using the terms iDrive uses. The first is called Cloud Drive. This is basically like a storage drive on your computer or NAS on your network, only off-site remote. You transfer files and folders via some form of file manager. This is usually provided by the, uh, either through your web browser or by the uh, service providers. Depending on how it's implemented, it can be time consuming to use, which is an issue I will discuss with iDrive. What changes from provider to provider is the interface, access speed, amount of storage, and the cost. Second type of service is called a cloud backup. As the name implies, this is an internet backup service, just like some local backup methods. While similar to Cloud Drive, it is not the same thing and has some distinct differences. This will generally involve a local installation of an application from your provider to handle what's backed up, be it full backup, incremental, differential, versioning, scheduling, whatever. Some services offer one or the other, and other services like iDrive offer both. Depending on your workflow and needs, one type of service might be more advantageous to you than the other. You need to check which one is offered by the provider you are thinking of using and which service is best for your specific situation. 
One other item to be aware of, depending on your one's paranoia level, and that's cloud storage encryption. Yes, iDrive has encryption on backups, but also at initial account setup, you can use your own private encryption key, which means if anyone wants to look at your data, they need your private key, which iDrive does not have. Of course, this also means you are responsible for your own encryption and your own data, and if you lose your key, you basically lost your data at that point. Now, some will question the validity of including internet-based services as a valid method of backup. In this video, I'm staying away from that argument as it's not the point here. Now let's talk more specifically about iDrive. So iDrive Incorporated specializes in online storage and backup technologies. The uh, company was originally uh, called uh, ProSoftNet Corporation, founded in 1995. Uh, the name change occurred after they acquired the iDrive.com domain from the defunct iDrive I company. So while iDrive has a number of products out on the market, uh, we're going to be mainly focusing on the cloud backup and the cloud drive, and, both, and they're both tied to their online storage services. iDrive has several offerings for online storage available, from the free basic plan to the top of the line business plan. Most plans have several storage tiers available as well. Plans are priced by month or year. When looking at prices, be aware that like many other businesses, there are always specials going on. In this video, I am using the basic tier of the iDrive personal plan. I got a decent one year break on the price, but it will go up after the first year, so it's something to be aware of. There are a number of features available in all plans. However, the ones you use will depend on your personal preferences and usage. For example, if you are using the cloud drive, then multi-device syncing could be something you want. If you're using the cloud backup, then features like snapshot cloning might fit your need better. One interesting thing I want to check out, according to iDrive website, the cloud, and I quote here, quote, the cloud drive storage does not impact your backup storage and matches your backup storage limit. End quote. Does this mean I have 10 terabytes of online storage? We shall see. The first use case for me was for cloud storage. On Linux, this is available through the web interface only. As far as I can tell, there is no local Linux application from iDrive for this feature. Uh, one note. Cloud Drive is not presented as a primary feature. Looking at my settings page, could Cloud Backup is listed at the top with a nice usage bar graph. Hey, that's nice. However, Cloud Drive is listed below that in very teeny tiny letters and numbers. Another note, uh, this listing also seems to confirm that Cloud Drive storage and Cloud Drive and cloud backup storage are counted separately, thus giving me 10 terabytes of total storage with five terabytes for cloud drive and five terabytes for cloud backup. Way to go, uh, iDrive, I like it. The web interface is somewhat spartan in appearance and features. That is to say, while the major features one would expect are present, there are not a lot of nice to have features. I personally prefer more spartan interfaces as it is less generally confusing. I have seen many web interfaces that have been loaded down with features that I'm never going to use, and they look extremely impressive, but also extremely complex. So Cloud Drive, uh, the actual storage drive, is available from the second menu item on the far left-hand menu bar in the web interface. The interface provides a search bar at the top of the page, and you can use that to search for various files or folders in your uh, storage area and below that we have a breadcrumbs or cookie crumbs trail whatever you want to call it that shows you what folder you're in and the parent folders of that folder there are icons along the top left of the interior interface for uploading a file uploading a folder and creating a new folder to the left are icons for trash details this is a drop down menu and list or thumbnail view Along the left side of the file list are checkboxes for multiple file folders, selection, and options. The add file or add folder 
icons will open a file browser on your local computer, or you can just drag and drop to the web interface, which is kind of nice, or you can create a new folder. Cloud Drive is not tied to any particular file folder structure on your uh, local computer, which is somewhat different from the cloud backup, but we'll get into that. Uh, the trash opens the trash folder or trash bin or trash directory, whatever you want to call it. It does not send selected items to the trash. The details menu gives you a choice of display size, gives you a choice to display size and last modified information in the file list view. Uh, not available in the thumbnail view though. Because the interface must refer back to iDrive remote storage, it is not going to be as responsive as a local file browser. So, so be aware of possible slower response times when changing folders. A down, down arrow at the end of each entry provides additional options, which Okay, let's talk about the cloud backup. A uh, quick note here, I have not run a full backup yet. I always want to observe various parts of the initial testing on something, but my schedule is not allowed it as the initial backup could take many, many hours. Believe me, many hours. I did run a backup of a single folder just to get a feel for the iDrive Linux program and answer my questions about cloud storage and cloud backup. I also downloaded the Android app onto my phone and set up a backup of my phone, which you can also see here. The uh, Linux version of iDrive works through your browser. You can also run it via the command line. However, I suspect most people will want to use the graphical browser interface. It can be downloaded from the iDrive website. So far, I've tested the installation steps by given by iDrive on both Debian and Arch, and both of which worked. The files get installed into the uh, slash opt directory. Also note that the actual interface is via the, if you're in your web browser, it's via the dashboard computer menu item, not the cloud backup. iDrive is set up, if iDrive is set up properly and running in the background locally, it will be de automatically detected by the browser, or at least it is on my installation. In theory, after the first full backup, the program should scan your drive and only backup what has changed. And then that's an incremental backup, which will be much quicker. I tested this back by backing up one folder, as I said, then making some changes and adding another folder. I want to see what iDrive does and does not back up. And it, again, worked as expected. It backed up the changes in the new files. Okay, I'm going to be working with the iDrive interface while discussing some of my thoughts about this product. One of the complaints I have seen leveled against iDrive is that it is slow. So let's talk about it. While copying files to cloud storage, I had the KDE network monitor widget running on the desktop tracking throughput. On large size files, I was getting 800 and 900 in BPS, which is, uh, Normal for my internet connection, technically I could get slightly higher raw throughput, but that does not take into account any overhead for uh, my system, my local network, or uh, iDrive. For, fault, for smaller files, however, performance was noticeably slower. However, this is to be expected with large numbers of small files. Your overhead climbs as each file needs to be negotiated separately. So personally, I have no complaints about I drive speed at this point. I did play around with the syncing feature using my phone as a second device. This works as an advertised. However, I do advise caution. I have not dived into the weeds of how syncing works on iDrive, but I know from past experience with Nextcloud that syncing can be a complicated issue and it's not as straightforward as just doing the latest file. And if you're not careful, it can result in data loss. Issues generally revolve around how files get dated. This is an issue when always syncing to the newest file as it is possible to change dates locally on a client, but the remote destination, AKA iDrive, has no idea that this has happened. I haven't had any issues yet with iDrive yet, but be forewarned of the possibility. Another issue, folder disappears from iDrive browser interface. 
To get the folder to show up again, I needed to clear my browser cache and restart the browser. After doing this, the folders were again displayed correctly. This occurred on both the cloud drive and the cloud backup sides of things. I was able to manually run the iDrive utility in a terminal and see that my backup was there, which led me to resetting the browser. This is partially iDrive's fault as there is a lot they could do to improve their online interface and they should really develop a full-blown GUI for Linux. I mean, that should be priority for them, but that's just my opinion. Speed of uploads and downloads on small files, I can definitely see performance issues, but I am attributing this to the overhead costs of doing lots of small files. I see some, I see similar performance hits when local backups, though not as severe. Interestingly, large files would upload at standard speeds for my internet connection, though after several files, I would see speeds decrease significantly. My initial suspicion was my ISP or internet service provider. So I ran the uploads in a virtual private network or VPN, and while slightly slower due to the VPN overhead, I did not see the same drop-offs. So I'm laying this squarely at the feet of my ISP. I already know they throttle some other things, so it's not surprising. Uh, they, for the area in the Philippines I'm living, they do have the best speeds though. So, But from a certain perspective, I can understand what they are doing for personal accounts, as I have seen people abuse these to no end. Mainly, because business accounts are so expensive, but I'm getting off topic here. VPN solved my problem with the large file slowdowns. And another issue I noticed, I, iDrive Cloud does not appear to check if a file exists already before uploading it. If I upload a folder with a, two new files in it, iDrive Cloud Drive uploads the whole folder instead of giving the warning and an option to skip files. This is a convenience thing that should be added to the cloud web cloud drive interface. So, I mean, those are the major issues I've had so far. I'll probably see more as I go along. Again, little research sometimes indicates problems are not necessarily coming from iDrive, but that's the way things go. Okay. Well, that's it for this video. We've taken a cursory look at the iDrive as a remote online storage solution, both cloud drive and cloud backup. And I should not call this cloud storage for reasons I mentioned before. My overall impression, iDrive is a good value for the money. So far I have stored my files in the cloud drive, been able to retrieve them without issue. Did have a display issue, but I fixed that by, re by clearing my browser cache. I have created a backup on both my computer and my phone, and they've worked fine with the cloud backup. And so far it has functioned as advertised. So the backup is much smaller than the data stored in Cloud Drive. There are some gotchas that you, one needs to be watch out for, but that's with every program. And to be fair, all programs have gotchas, including iDrive, and some of them are not necessarily iDrive's fault, at least not totally. And there are some missing nice to have features, that, like a Linux application. So that's my experience with iDrive. It does have some quirks, and to me, none of them are deal breakers. I like their bare bones web interface, but they need to do some work on the back end to improve overall functionality and reliability, and they need really need to develop that full Linux GUI application. But these are things I can live with considering the amount of inexpensive stories they're providing. So yeah, at this point, thumbs up. This may or may not change in the future. We shall see. As always, Please like, subscribe, and comment, and we'll see you next time around.